The earth was barren with no form of life. It was under a roaring ocean covered with darkness. But the Spirit of God moving over the water. So here's what you got. You've got you've got land, the earth. That's that layer. Over top of all the land was the water, the ocean. Then on top of that was a darkness. And the Holy Spirit was over top of the ocean. And he's just hovering, brooding, the Bible says. Just going back and forth, moving over the water. Now remember, there's no land in sight. But it was underneath something. It was in a place. Amen. And he's just going back and forth. Only God knows how long this happened, right? What was he waiting on? He was waiting for a word from the Lord, the word God, Jesus, to speak. And he said, light be. And light was. The land was not uncovered until he spoke to it and it came up. And when the Holy Spirit was going back and forth, he was waiting for the word so he could operate in this place that we couldn't see. You couldn't see it. But the Holy Spirit waits for the word to be spoken. So why? He can start moving on your behalf now. We welcome you to Getting Ready with Jamie Cart Ministries. And this is how it was from the beginning. And yet even before that beginning was the word, Jesus. So Jesus had to speak. The word had to speak. Holy Spirit's waiting for Jesus, the word, to speak. The word. He could not do anything until the word of God was spoken. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11.3, this is in the King James Version. Through faith, so we're talking about this law that made even the land come up out of the ocean. That the Holy Spirit waits on through faith. We understand, we get it, glory to God, that the worlds, it's plural, were framed by the word of God. The same operational procedure in the very beginning is the same operational procedure now. He does not change. This is how you frame your world. It's through the word of God being spoken out of your mouth. So, the world, the words, excuse me, the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things, things which are seen were not made by we mean made they were they are a, they start out a substance and then they are made the more you speak it you are forming you are framing that substance of faith into the matter that you are believing God for it's a process amen things which are seen were not made, created by things which do appear. Amen. So there is a process of bringing things that you're believing God for into the, your, your place of seeing, smelling, tasting, touching. That is the realm of this world. Okay? Told you we're going to go to some really cool things tonight. Amen. Kind of track with me. We're tracking with the Holy Spirit here. Proverbs 18, 21. This is in the Amplified. And it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
we got a lot of information right there. Death and life are in the power. So your tongue has power, number one. What are the powers? They are the powers of death, and they are the powers of life. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it, death or life. You're going to eat, see, and it will manifest what you say. Now, you may say something, and you're like, well, I don't see it right now. There's a substance going on. If you believed what you said, you put your faith in, in work. You're made in the image of God. This is how Jesus operated. This is how Father operated. This is how Holy Spirit operates. Jesus lives inside of you. He still operates the same way as when he walked the earth. He's still walking the earth right now inside of us. And he's still following the laws of the kingdom of God. He's never going to stop doing that because he's the king. He follows his rules. Amen. So how do you do faith? How do you do it? Mark 11, 12, 14 and then the verses of 20 to 25 in the NIV. We do have them on the screen. It says, the next day as they were leaving Bethany. Now the question is, how do you do faith? Okay. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. See, Jesus was the son of Adam. That's why he kept saying that. He was letting us know everything that Adam lost, the son of Adam is here. And I'm going to get it all back for you. Of course, we, see, we know it now. Amen. We got it all back. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. And the reason that he would have done that was because a fig tree, when it blooms, it blooms leaf and fruit at the same time. He was also, in referencing, when you see this, also the fig tree is a representation of Israel in the word of God. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, so he is, now this is the king of kings. Remember, you're a, you're a king and a priest. Revelation tells us that. So he is the big king capital K, we're the small kings, amen, we, we serve under the king, so he says, as the king, he's speaking to objects, now, if he's the king and he still had all his power of being separate of the way that we would have to operate down here, why is he doing this? It's because he had to operate in the same laws that we operate in here. Now, because all he would have to have done in his, all his heavenly power is just to looked at it and done whatever he wanted. But you see him operating in the same laws that he wants us to operate here on the earth. Many people believe, yeah, but that's, that's Jesus. He can do anything. You can too. We can do everything. He said, you should be doing greater. <laughs> he said, greater works will you do. So this is an endless, boundless, wonderful gift he's given us. But a lot of people think, I couldn't do that. Jesus could do that. And you've got a lot of people not operating in the power that God has already placed in them. So you see the king, and he is speaking to things. <laughs> Glory to God. May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. So he didn't whisper it. He wasn't like, I ain't going to let nobody hear me. You are not going <laughs> to. No, no, no. He said it out loud, boldly, to other people could hear it. He's speaking to things. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. So, if something is being withered from the roots, that means that it started from wherever that tree started. In a place you couldn't see. In a hidden place. Something that, though you couldn't see it, the words that he spoke was still working. And then what happened? Time. He spoke it, time, evidence. 
So just because you can't see it yet does not mean it's not working for you. I want to encourage you tonight, encourage myself. Just because you are speaking things into existence and you're speaking the word and you are taking the word and you're pointing it at a situation in your life to an object in your life. I always say this when this one's a disease. We're believing for a brand new four-wheel drive, fully loaded and debt-free white Rams pickup truck. Why do I say that like that? Because that's how I say it every day. According to, and I say my scripture. What's my scripture? I'm talking about, it said, the ram's horns shall sound a long blast and the people may go up on the mountain. Y'all know we're up on the mountain. Hallelujah. So, I'm attaching the word to an object and I'm speaking it into existence. Okay? So that's an open window on how you do this. Yet Jesus was telling us how to do this here. That when he spoke to that tree, you could not see what he said yet. He, you could not see the evidence of may no one ever eat fruit from you again. What was needing to happen? It took some time for that faith project to work and to manifest and for the substance of faith to come together and form the evidence that you could now see. At the time, you couldn't see the evidence of what he was saying, what he said. So what happens the next day? They see... What he said, verse, uh, excuse me, 21. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God. He didn't say, Peter, that's so good that you noticed that. Well done. No. He's teaching something here. He's trying to get over to them. You can do this too. Because he didn't say, I just have faith. No, he said, have faith in God. What was he trying to say? You can speak to objects and make things happen just like you saw me do too. Have faith in God. God is the word. Jesus is the word. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth. If anyone says, so you can't just look at something and think it, think it, think it, think it, think it. You can't do that. You have to speak it. We've got to do it through the operational procedure. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea. See, he used objects to teach with. If anyone says to this mountain, so there was a mountain there, and he's pointing at it, I'm sure, and he says, go, if you say it even to a mountain here, go throw yourself into the sea and don't doubt in your heart, but believe what you are saying will happen. It will be done for you. This is a guarantee. Amen. So remember in the very beginning when we were looking in Hebrews and it said that faith is being sure faith and, and faith is being certain. Well, this is what he's talking about. He's saying you don't doubt. You've got to be certain of what you're speaking. You've got to be certain. You've got to be sure. And then you don't doubt it in your heart, but you keep believing. You keep being certain. You keep being sure of it. And if you will do that, this will happen for you. How wonderful is the kingdom of God, amen, to give us this tool to operate here on this earth. It's wonderful. Now there's more to it. Therefore, I tell you, whatever. So this is a blank check. Whatever. That can't be against the kingdom of God. You can't be believing for something that's not of the, of the will and, the, of, and of the book. But whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. So that doesn't mean I'm going to believe it when I can see it. It means that I have to believe I have received it when I pray. When I start this faith project, when I start speaking, I believe I have received it now. And because I'm sure of it, because I'm certain of it, even though I can't see it, my evidence is the word of God. My evidence is what's coming out of my mouth. So if we believe it and we received it at the moment that we start our faith, Dwayne and I call them faith projects. That's, that's just what we call it our house. Once you start and you start believing, you start receiving, and you start speaking that faith project, he says, it's a promise from the Lord, that if you will believe it in your heart, you can speak even to a mountain, and it will do what you say. There is nothing too big as a mountain, nothing too, too uh, 
large to anything that will not do what you tell it. Glory to God. That's how powerful you are. So why do faith? Why go to all this effort? Is it effort? Well, yeah, it's effort. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. But you know what? It is an honorable thing. It's a very honorable thing. And we read this earlier. The just are supposed to be living by faith. We're called to this. His people are supposed to be living their lives by faith. We're supposed to be talking different. We're supposed to be walking different. We're supposed to be seeing things manifest through the faith world, not through our own will and power, not of the world's way, the kingdom's way. What is faith again? It is the substance. Now, we're getting ready to go into the keys. So lock in. Now, faith is the substance, reading this again, of the things we hope for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Here we go. This is the same scripture in the Living Bible. It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us. Is waiting for us. Even though we cannot see it up ahead. So when you say that something is waiting on you, when you say that something is up ahead, what you're saying is it's in a place. What you are believing God for, speaking out of your mouth, being confident about, being sure, not being wavered back and forth, tossed like the sea. No, you're locking in. <laughs> you're locking in. You're putting that word before your eyes. You're believing by faith for a house. You're believing by faith for a car. You're believing by faith, whatever your faith project is. You've got a scripture. You're putting it in your eyes, getting it down in your heart, speaking it out of your mouth. It is working. The Lord wants you to know tonight. It's working. And it is waiting on you. And it is in a place. Okay, now let's really hear this. Your stuff, your things, is in a place. And it's in a place, and it's waiting on you. And it's up ahead of you. Which means you keep going toward it and with your faith, you're going to run right into it. Oh, wow. Because it's waiting on you in a place. Hallelujah. The substance that you are forming by your faith is being stored and kept and is waiting for us Somewhere, according to the word. According to the word. Let's look at the word again. It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. So it's in a place. The substance and what you're forming with your faith, that matter, <laughs> that it says in the other translation, that substance, it says in another translation, that you are forming. How am I forming it? I'm forming it by putting the word in my eyes, getting down in my heart, speaking out of my mouth, believing I receive it when I pray, when I speak it. I am forming these faith projects by my faith and how faith works comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, speaking to mountains, speaking to things. Hearing, speaking. Hearing, speaking. Hearing and believing it, speaking. So I am forming something by my faith. And what I am forming is stored. 
It is being kept somewhere. It is waiting for me somewhere. Hallelujah. By the word. This is not a theory. This is the word. It's waiting. It's up ahead. Glory to God. So when you look at this place of storage, <laughs> hallelujah, storage places, that things that by our faith, believing we receive when we pray, getting the word in us, it coming out of us, operating in the law of heaven called faith. It is being stored in a realm. And a, the word realm is a royal domain. It's a kingdom. The word realm means a region, a sphere, or a domain within which anything occurs, prevails, and exists or dominates, controls, rules, or governs. There is a place, a realm, a world to which things are happening, things are occurring, things are prevailing, things are existing in, waiting on, and it's a place that has rules. It, it's a place that has a government. It's a dimension. It's a world. It's a place. It's a principality. And it is a place, a zone. And it's a place that you can reach. Hallelujah. So our stuff... Our faith projects, the things that we're operating in the law of faith, if we're certain, if we are if we are sure and we keep operating in this law of faith, believing in our heart, confessing with our mouth, that's how you got born again. Same law that got you born again is the same law that will get the things that you're believing God for. Amen. So these things are inside of this place, according to the word. And they're waiting for you. And it's going to happen for you. And it is up ahead of you. Glory to God. That excites me. Because I know all I got to do is continue being sure. Continue being certain. And the enemy tries to tell you something different. Oh, no. The Bible says this. This is what he, I believe him. I'm not believing you. I resist you. That's how you keep him out of your faith project. So this place, this realm where things are occurring, this region, this sphere where, this, where your things are, they're waiting for you. They're up ahead of you in your faith project. In this place. Let's read about this place. It's in Ephesians 6, 11 through 12. And this is in the New Living Translation. It says, put on, we know this for a while, put on that full armor of God. We do this before I get out of bed, everyone. Move the covers and I say, put on the belt of truth and I go at it. Amen. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. We're still talking about that realm. We're talking about that place. We're talking about that world that your things are in. So that you can stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Verse 12. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. There is a world, and it's called the unseen world. And it is a place that is around us right now. It is a place where good, bad, light, dark. And it is a place that your faith is operating. It's a place where your faith is forming things. It's a place where the substance that's coming out of you is making things happen. And that place is where your angels are. That place is where the demonic is. And that place is what's up ahead of you. And everything that you are waiting on is inside of that realm. And your faith will pull and form what you're believing him for till it will come into this realm that you can see it and touch it and smell it. You will see the evidence come. 
And it's in this realm. And it is waiting. There's things inside that realm waiting. Now this is, this is steak. This is chewing on meat tonight, okay? The Lord impressed me to go this route. So whoever's listening and watching, and those of you who are here, you're ready for this. I'm ready for this. Ready. Glory to God. So this realm is around us, this world. That's one of the words that this realm that is in Ephesians talks about. It is a world. It's a whole other world that's going on around us at all times. When you're asleep, that world, that world is still operating. Though you can't see it, touch it, smell it, it's still operating around us right now. So, this unseen world, and again, we're putting on the full armor of God, for we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen realm. Remember we talked about in this realm, there is a government, there is a dominion. Inside of this realm is rank, okay? It is a full-fledged, operating, 24-7 government world that even has rulers in it, trying to control it. But here's the good news. The Bible says we have the power and authority of the Lord Jesus now. And I'll show you this. Let me just get there. So, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty power. So we have the right... We have the power and the authority to fight this evil ruler's authorities in this world, this unseen world that's around us. We have the authority to also fight against the powers in this dark world and against evil spirits even in the heavenlies. Okay? That's why he's saying, suit up. Suit up. We were created to fight. And how are we supposed to be fighting? The good fight of faith. How do we do that? By faith. Isn't that wonder? That's how that kingdom works. That world works. And yet, it's us the ones that can operate in faith. Thank you so much for watching Getting Ready Today. This ministry is called to reach the law and to help the bride of Christ get ready for the wedding day, which is the rapture of the church. All this is made possible through the faithful prayer and financial support of our partners and friends. If you would like to become a part of the JCM family, please contact us. Also, send us your prayer needs and praise report. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, keep getting ready. Jesus is coming.